Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, uh, my presentation will be about uh, bio-based polymers, planed composites uh, for container production materials. And uh, I'm going to focus on the materials, why we have selected this material for the pot production. Uh, so the content of my presentation, I will start with bioplastic origin advantage and disadvantage of bioplastic material, and then bio-based polylactide, soya protein blends, and composite. After that, I will speak about uh, polyhydroxyalkanoate, DDGs, and the lignin cellulose fiber composites and polyamide and the lignin cellulose fiber composite and uh, why we use uh, polyurethane dispersion as uh, a deep coating material to improve the mechanical properties and to decrease the water uptake of some of the commercially available uh, bio, uh, bio materials. And then I will end my presentation with a short summary. So the bioplastic material, it is include all of the bio-based plastic and also include all of the biodegradable polymers. Even they are coming from the petroleum-based product. For example, here we have polyepsilon caprolactone, polybutylene succinate, and polyethylene succinate. They are biodegradable, but originally they are petroleum-based product. So it is belong to the bioplastic material. So why? bio-based plastic material because you know that most of the uh, petroleum-based products are non-sustainable and also they are uh, non-degradable. So they make about up to 20% by volume waste every year. So the price is related to the oil price. When the oil price is high, so the production of petroleum-based plastic also very high. However, the natural resources are inexpensive and available with huge amount. It is a way to reduce the carbon dioxide emission and it is biodegradable at the end of its uh, life. So there are three different uh, categories can be used to obtain the bioplastic material direct, directly extracted from the biomass and we have selected soya protein, lignin and DDGs for our project or by polymerization of the uh, monomer from biomass. So as in the case here it is poly BLA or polyamide. Uh, the last category here by fermentation uh, using microorganisms, and this is one example, myrel or PHA. So here's some drawbacks of uh, bio-based polymer. They still uh, high cost compared to the petroleum-based product, and this here, the BLA, BHA, uh, BHA and the B, uh, polyamide, the price of this material a little bit more expensive than the petroleum-based product. In addition to that, the material also have some poor mechanical properties and the high water sensitivity, as in the case of soya protein and starch. So our, uh, uh, our suggestion to just decrease the uh, cost or to improve the mechanical properties is by polymer blend or by polymer composite or by uh, bio-based uh, bio uh, deep coating. So. Uh, and this is the reason for blending. So normally we use blending to reduce the cost or to improve the mechanical and physical properties or to just control the biodegradation rate and decrease the processing temperature and also adjust the composition for some uh, application. Also the uh, filler, normally we add filler to the bio-based polymer to uh, increase the dimensional stability to uh, increase the strength, toughness, and environmental resistance. And the most of these uh, bio-based fillers, they are uh, abundant, inexpensive, renewable, and biodegradable. So we use, in, uh, for our project, we use DDGs and lignin cellulose fiber. DDGs is biodegradable, but lignin cellulose fiber is not. So those uh, uh, fillers, they are very cheap. And then probably when we add this filler to the bio, uh, bio bio-based material, so it will increase the degradation rate and decrease the cost. To just have an idea how much uh, the, uh, the bio-based uh, polymer like BLA, BHA, so it the, the, the range of the price it changes from $2 to up to $4 dollar per pound. However, some of these uh, filler like, uh, for example, lignin uh, fiber, it is 30, uh, 35 cent per pound, DDGs is 8 cent per pound, corn silver, 27 cents per pound. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense to just blend uh, the high 
uh, price polymer, bio-based polymer like polylactite with those filler to reduce the cost. And uh, also some, some of them, as I just mentioned, they are biodegradable. So we can also control the biodegradation rate uh, by making some of these polymer blend or polymer composites. So the uh, objective here is to develop and evaluate commercially visible bioplastic uh, containers that will have all of the advantage of petroleum-based product without their drawback. And uh, our aim to just use most of the thermoplastic um, bio-based polymer like polylactide, BHA, polyamide, and uh, soya uh, protein, make blends and also make composite to control the degradation and uh, to uh, improve the mechanical properties. Uh, recently developed natural oil-based coating will also uh, use to improve the mechanical properties and to decrease the water uh, sensitivity. So mainly I'm going to just uh, characterize the degraded material. So the biodegradation uh, test would be carried out under landscape condition and I have used all of these techniques, differential scanning calorimeter, dynamic mechanical thermal analysis, scanning electron microscope and uh, rheology to uh, characterize the degradation uh, behavior of these polymer blends and polymer composites. And here this is the polylactite. Polylactite is the most widely the most widely used bio-based and biodegradable polyester. It can be prepared from the fermentation of corn uh, starch, so hydrolysis followed by fermentation and then condensation. And uh, once we have the lactite by ring opening polymerization, we can get the polylactite. Uh, and the polylactite has a very good mechanical properties, but still more expensive than the conventional plastic. Polylactite can be easily degraded by hydrolysis but the problem is uh, the degradation rate of polylactide inside is very slow. So we have to issue about polylactide. It is expensive and the degradation rate is not that fast. So we would like to just improve the degradation behavior of polylactide and decrease the cost, the production cost. So, and we thought about two different ways, either by blending with uh, soy protein, for example, and definitely the, by blending so, uh, poly, polylactide with soy protein, we can improve the degradation rate. Uh, adding some of those filler like DDGs or lignin, it will decrease the cost uh, dramatically. And the DDGs has also some other advantage. It will increase the degradation rate. Uh, soya protein can make three-dimensional amorphous structure. It is very cheap material and we can get it with different uh, form like soya flour, concentrate and isolate. And uh, I think this is a slide, I think it is, has been prepared by Dr. Grewell. Uh, and this is how we can make the soya protein uh, melt processable by adding some plasticizer like glycerin or, and water and some of the inorganic filler. And then the material can be melt processable. And then we can use extrusion and injection molding to make the, uh, the pipe out. The problem is this material, we cannot use it as as is because it is, has very poor mechanical properties and the water sensitivity is very high. So we can just try to overcome this problem by blending with polylactite. So blending soya protein with polylactite will improve the mechanical properties of soya protein and decrease the water sensitivity of, poly, uh, uh, of the uh, soya protein. In the same time, it will decrease the cost of the polylactite a little bit, not, not dramatically, and also will increase the degradation rate of polylactide. And this is uh, a typical experimental data, how the, um, the material degraded when we mix it with soya protein. This is 50-50%. As you can see here, the polylactide, this is a degradation uh, uh, rate or degradation time uh, per week, and this is a weight loss percent. So the polylactide almost has no degradation. It is almost 0%. But once you add 50% soya protein, the degradation rate increased dramatically and then it's become leveled off after about 15 weeks of degradation time. Uh, most likely it is only the uh, soya protein degrade and the, the remaining amount it is just the polylactide. Uh, by doing some DECC measurement, we have found that after just eight weeks, the uh, melting point is shifted to a little bit to higher temperature, which is, which means that the crystallization percent of the plane increased by uh, degradation. And uh, probably this is because 
the, uh, the degradation takes place in the amorphous part and it remain, uh, only the crystalline part remaining in the uh, plane. Uh, and after that, at uh, longer degradation time, the uh, melting part doesn't uh, change uh, too much. The uh, elastic modulus, this temperature dependence of the elastic modulus, is, as, as you can see, it is decreased uh, significantly by degradation. And the glass relaxation process, which is related to the TG of the material, is shifted to higher temperature, but not much, is very minor. And uh, by checking the morphology of, uh, I think if we just cut the light a little bit, we can see it clearly. Yeah, here. So this is no degradation. We have very smooth uh, surface. This is a surface morphology by SEM, scanning electron microscope. So we have a very smooth structure. With increasing the degradation time, we have rough structure and the cracks everywhere in the surface. And uh, after 24 weeks, we have like uh, a very porous material. And this is due to the degradation of soya protein. Is that because it's brittle or is that because it's just breaking down? It is a degrad real degradation. It is the, uh, the molecular weight decreased. Uh, uh, and the, the material, of course, it changes to become very brittle. Yeah, it's both of them. Another example is uh, bio-based from Aspen. It is polylactite and soya protein blends. We don't have too much uh, information about this blend, but what we have found that this material is totally amorphous. There is no any crystallinity in that material. And uh, with increasing the degradation time, the glass transition temperature is still remaining the same. So there is no any decrease in the TG of the material. But uh, the degradation rate here increased dramatically and it's also reached equilibrium after about 15 weeks of degradation time. Similar, uh, the same also, the storage modulus decreased uh, significantly by degradation and the glass transition temperature or the glass relaxation uh, temperature of the material slightly affected but not much. It is shifted to higher temperature after almost uh, 16 weeks and this is probably due to the degradation of soya protein. Soya protein may be act as plasticizer. When the soya protein degrade, so the plasticizing effect will be eliminated. And then this is why it is shifted to higher temperature. And after that decrease again a little bit to become identical, identical to the, uh, the undegraded material.